The South African Revenue Service is going after the local unit of BP. It's accused the oil and gas firm of engaging in fraudulent tax conduct at the expense of the fiscus. South Africa's tax laws make provision for SARS to refund excise duties, fuel levies and road accident fund levies pay, paid on fuel manufactured in the country but ultimately exported elsewhere. The tax agency believes that the 3 million gallons of diesel the oil major claims to have exported to Zimbabwe between June and September 2019 never left the country. And so the company isn't entitled to the 220 million rand in rebates it claimed from the national purse. BP has denied the allegations and the dispute will go to trial on a date yet to be determined. Met Air has selected a new CEO, Paul O'Flaty, will uh, lead the vehicle components and uh, batteries group from the 1st of February. He takes over from uh, Jude Duvenga. O'Flaty joins the Met Air, or joins Met Air rather, from EY Pathanon, uh, which he's led since uh, 2021. Before that, he served as CEO of ArcelorMittal SA and as finance director at Group 5. He also held the position of finance director at ESCOM between 2010 and 2013. A statement from the company says that the board believes O'Flaty's uh, appointment will provide stability for the group. This will help accelerate the execution of the company's key initiatives to unlock value for shareholders. Meanwhile, the World Economic Forum kicks off today. South Africa's delegation will be there to present the country's investment case. Finance Minister Enok Kodongwana has previously stated that as Africa's most industrialized nation, SA is a compelling case for investment. That's despite the many structural challenges impacting the economy. Kodongwana says Team SA will look to sell the country by acknowledging the challenges while reassuring investors that strategies and roadmaps are in place to address the shortcomings. And speaking to those usual economic themes at Davos, the global economy is facing a tricky year ahead. That's according to a survey of top economists. The research is pulled together annually and released at the World Economic Forum. And this year's findings show that the world economy will have to navigate subdued growth prospects, uncertainty stemming from geopolitical strife, tight financing conditions and the disruptive impact of artificial intelligence. Over in Germany, the economy on that front experienced a contraction last year. This is due to persistent inflation, high energy prices and weak foreign demand. Despite all this, the Central European nation avoided closing off 2023 in a recession. Let's listen to this report for more. The German economy contracted in 2023 but avoided a recession. Just. Persistent inflation, high energy prices and weak foreign demand drove the fall. Official data released showed GDP shrank 0.3% over the full year, in line with analyst forecasts. Germany's statistics office said prices remained high and hurt economic growth. As a result, the country's economy did not continue its recovery from the sharp economic slump seen in the global health crisis but GDP was still 0.7% higher last year than in 2019, the year before the health crisis hit. Economic performance in industry, excluding construction, fell 2% in 2023. That was due to much lower production in the energy supply sector. Household consumption in 2023 was down a price-adjusted 0.8% on the previous year, the slow pace of growth of the global economy and weak domestic demand in 2023 also hurt foreign trade, which declined despite falling prices. The German economy shrank by 0.3% in the final quarter of last year compared with the previous period. However, the Eurozone's largest economy stagnated in the previous quarter after earlier negative numbers were revised upwards. That means the country didn't quite see two straight quarters of contraction the usual definition of a recession.